Good, good morning. It's uh, almost, it is eight o'clock. I'll ask everybody to take a seat and uh, I'm going to ask uh, if Representative Vance Smith will lead us in prayer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you would, bow your heads. Lord, we do thank you for this day you've given us, and we thank you for all the blessings you've always given us. We aren't thankful enough, Lord, but we do come to you at this th time. We ask that you lead, guide, and direct us, grant us knowledge and wisdom, help us to work together for the betterment of this state to leave our children and grandchildren a better place. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, on the agenda this morning, there's a couple bills we're going to hold. Uh, I don't know who's here, but House Bill 249, we're, we're not going to hear this morning, and House Bill 330. So we're, we're going to hold those to a, a later date. Uh, the first bill we have up this morning, uh, House Bill 353 by Chairman Todd Jones. I'll ask him if he'll come to the podium and present the bill. Representative Jones. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee. What, what's your LC I'm number about, on that as yes, well? Sir. Yes, sir. It's the substitute to House Bill 353, LC 39290-S. Members of the committee, uh, I come to you uh, what, with what is not necessarily a simple bill, but we hope one that you deem to be appropriate. Um, we are trying to protect cyclists on Georgia roads. So there was a need to provide a clarification to the three foot rule or the three foot passing rule that is currently in statute. We wanted to be able to provide a guidance for drivers in terms of when they are approaching that cyclist and they need to be able to create a three feet buffer. But there were questions around such things as can they cross a double line? Again, that's a question, and we wanted to give that clarification in terms of what they can and cannot do. So you'll see that we were able to provide greater clarification in line 16 and 17. And then further, what we did was my sheriff and I spoke, and he goes, we were thinking about removing from line, excuse me, 25 and 26, the words when feasible. The challenge with when feasible is it opens up this massive hole of, well, feasible, of course, is very subjective. So when I spoke to the sheriff, the sheriff mentioned the idea of using the move over law as a pattern for lines 18 through 23. In fact, we spoke with leg council and we thought that using the current sanitation, basically move over law was more applicable to the cyclists. So that's in fact already in statute on the sanitation side for sanitation workers. We took that and we basically lifted it and placed it for cyclists. So ultimately what this bill does is make it clearer that when you're approaching a cyclist that you must create a three foot buffer. And if you can't create that three foot buffer, then you must follow the provisions in lines 18 through 23 in terms of reducing your speed and being prepared to stop so that we can create a safe condition for the cyclist until the point where you may pass that cyclist with a three feet buffer safely. Thank you. Uh, we do have a question number eight. Would that be Representative McLean? And thank you too for, for bringing this piece of legislation because I've always thought that something should be taking place. But uh, on line 25, you've got the uh, a fine of 250,000, I mean, excuse me, $250. I mean, was that just something arbitrary? I mean, I just didn't know if, if that in code somewhere. Or yeah, you... oh, I'm sorry, Representative McLean. Yes, that's in code. And again, we lifted that from the sanitation side and we just placed it in here, basically trying to make a parallel. Thank you. You're welcome. Good bill. And, and there's something also uh, similar in code with uh, law enforcement as, as well. So this mirrors that. Yeah, well. Mr. Chairman, this doesn't completely mirror the move over law, but it has a lot of, I'll say, similarities to the move over law that we currently have in PAC for our public uh, safety officials who are on the shoulder. Yes. Did, did we have anybody sign up that wanted to speak on, on this measure? I, I don't. Think so, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there is someone from Zoom who would like to be able to speak. All right. Okay. How do we get them to zoom in? 
Uh, he signed signed up, but he is actually not logged in. Uh, uh, we do have one other question, number fourteen. Uh, who? I was just at the right time. I'd like to make a motion to do pass. All right, I, I've got Representative McLean had a motion do pass, and got a second okay. from Representative Weedauer. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? No discussion. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Like sign. You have your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the committee. Thank you. And we have the 01 and 02 copies, so we're good. All right. All right. Uh, next on the agenda will be House Bill 165 uh, with Timmy Barr. And we heard that in subcommittee. Uh, Representative Montana, you want to hear a report on the subcommittee's finding on that bill? <clears throat> what number are you? Let's see. What? Let's see. Mr. Chairman. Uh, that bill passed out of subcommittee unanimously. No opposition. Thank you. Representative uh, Chairman Barr. Representative Thank you, sir. Good morning, committee. So if you've been here a while, you've probably seen this bill a couple of times. We successfully get it out of the House with zero opposition, but the Senate likes to attach things to it. So I'll try again. Uh, we have... Uh, affectionately named this bill the GPS Freedom Bill. So currently, under current law, it is illegal to affix anything to your front windshield other than a transparent sticker. Uh, and this basically repeals that law and allows you to put a GPS, a uh, which becoming more and more popular, a, a video camera, or uh, in in some of our cases, a phone holder. Uh, when I initially drafted this, worked with law enforcement, and we added um, the provision that it does not obstruct your view, and so they're they're okay with this bill. Um, so it's 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 basically just giving us a little more freedom to to put our phones and our devices on our windshields uh, if they do not obstruct any of our view. Happy to take any questions, sir. Representative McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, you know, I, I, I love the bill too. Don't get me wrong. I, I just didn't know was, was it a size limit? Could you, I mean, I don't know if it's a, you know, telephone, some telephones are this wide. Or, there, there is no restriction other than, uh, I, I, it would be in, in the deference of the officer, whether it actually obstructs your view or not, but no, we didn't put any, um, mm -hmm. any, any size limits on this. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Do we have any other questions? I'd love to ask a rhetorical question. And is there any folks on the committee who may have uh, a device affixed to their windshield? <laughs> <laughs> you got all right. Representative Weedauer has a motion do pass. Do we have a second? I uh, have a motion to second by Representative Ridley. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed like sign? Motion Thank, carried. Thank, Thank you, committee. All right. Uh, the next bill we got up is House Bill 179, and it was uh, going to be by Representative Beth Camp. And what it, it's the, uh, our omnibus, omnibus bill. We've uh, combined several bills uh, into one on our tags. And uh, what I've done, I've asked the authors of the individual tags to be here to kind of talk about their part of the, the, the bill. Uh, the, the first part of 179, I believe, is the tax commissioner's part. I'm gonna ask Chairman Knight if he will come up. And we, we passed this part of the bill, I think standalone bill last year, is that correct, <laughs> Chairman Knight? I, if I remember correctly. So, and that's, uh, I think, line 17 through 30 talk, talks about that. If you'll I, talk about that part Very simple that. bill, as, as everyone knows, our tax commissioners are um, elected officers. I want to make sure you know it's not the tax assessors. Uh, these are our, <laughs> our, our elected uh, officers, uh, similar to our sheriffs. You know, we've got constitutional elected officers at the, at the local level. They're one of those groups. So basically they're asking for a specialty tag in which they'll have to renew every year. 
Um, this part of our bill allows them to either use it on their personal vehicle or a work issued vehicle. Um, and uh, however, um, you know, in the end, after they've left office, they may not use that tag. So it is only available to them during the time in which they are to office. So they'd be subject just like our tags. When we Absolutely. leave office, we have to render that tag back to them. Absolutely. And, and there's an annual registration and, you know, there's a renewal additional 25, I think it's $25 additional renewal uh, uh, registration oh, fee. Over the $20 uh, uh, yep. normal fee. So yep. it's, uh, that is correct. So. All right. Do we have any any questions on that that part of, of the bill? I, number eight, Representative McClain. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess I'm on the roll this morning. I guess uh, you like butter, uh, uh, Chairman Knight. I, my only concern is so the the twenty. So is this a personal thing that they're going to pay for, like we pay for hours or yes. or is this no it, taxpayers' it, money? That no, no, it's their it's theirs, uh, and they, however, may use it on a a. a you know, a, a, a on work, a, on a re, yeah, yeah, work related, you know, vehicle, but however, the tag is theirs, only they can do it personally and they have to pay uh, uh, the tag, the specialty registration fee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, that's going on to section two on the bill. Uh, if uh, you remember it, uh, start with I think lines 37 through 61. Is dealing with colleges and universities, and I, I believe uh, it might have been Representative McLean's bill we did a couple of years ago, where the, the the money was had to be dedicated to a student from Georgia. Isn't that, isn't that correct, Representative McLean? And that's this this. If you read the last part of, I think fifty nine through sixty one, basically any uh, college that fits that description, you know, even though they're not in Georgia, but they have a specialty plate, which many of them do. Uh, the money has to be used for a student you know, from Georgia that's enrolled in that university uh, is what we're doing with, with that part of the bill. Uh, is there any, any questions on, on that section? What, what, what number are you? 10? Yes, sir. So just to clarify, it looks like we are, we are cleaning up and directing that this be done, which is already a current law. Currently, this is how yeah. it happens, but we're actually now putting it in statute. Is that correct? Where the, any money raised has to be uh, used for a financial aid or scholarship for a uh, Georgia student. Very good, thank you. Uh, uh, then I think uh, the next part of the bill is, I don't see Representative Gamble here this morning, was a support. He is. For, uh, he's hiding behind the, the pillar. All right, Representative Gamble, if you want to uh, speak to lines 66 through 68. Yes, yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, you have before you as a part of this bill, the support our troops license plate. Uh, you probably are familiar with this from last year because this committee passed it last year. Um, it didn't make it. Um, the Senate has also passed uh, this last week the same um, support our troops license plate language. So I know that's come over here as well. But um, I, I had worked with this organization and I'm very familiar with them. They're based in Tampa, Florida. And I brought the receipts for what they've given uh, directly intangible MWR supplies um, to support our soldiers here in Georgia is just under four million dollars. Uh, in the past three years. And so if we authorize this plate, it will allow them to have access to additional funds that go directly to support our soldiers. Do we have any questions on that, that part? All right, not seeing any, thank you. Thank you. The next part of the bill we're going, uh, we, we get into deals with the uh, breast cancer tag, which we passed uh, last year. Uh, if um, Ms. Durham will, will, will come up, since uh, Beth Camp, Representative Camp, will be actually carrying, carrying this bill, but she's getting her COVID shots this morning, her vaccine, and could not be here. I'll, I'll ask Ms. Durham if she will actually show us what, what the new design looks like, the, the same we, we passed last year for, for breast cancer that got held up in the, in the Senate. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm Lynn Durham. I'm president and CEO of Georgia Core, the Georgia Center for Oncology Research and Education. And I'm uh, very pleased to bring this back to you. Last year, this committee did uh, approve this redesign of the breast cancer tag, but it wasn't uh, didn't go through the Senate because of COVID, uh, everything was going on there. But um, the breast cancer tag was introduced in 2002 and it was designed with a the postage stamp for breast cancer. That is really no longer recognizable to most people. It's been gone for quite a while. And this is much more recognizable. Uh, we used to get about a million dollars a year um, that we then gave uh, throughout the states in the form of grants for screenings, prevention, education, and breast cancer. Now we are down to about $350,000 a year. So we really believe this redesign is going to engage people again and ask them to, um, to, to repurchase it. So uh, that is our hope and I request your, your approval of that. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Ms. Durham. Uh, the, let me just say the, the LC number we're working off of, but I didn't, I failed to mention that earlier, the LC 392891S. And, and we do have a couple of uh, members online this, this morning. We've got uh, Representative Prince and Representative Kennard and, and uh, Representative Douglas online as well. So glad to have them uh, online with us this morning. The last part of this build lines 90 through 92 deals with, with the Georgia course. It's an it's a all cancer tag. And I'm gonna ask Ms. Representative Baysmore, she'll come up and, and talk about uh, that, that part of the build. And that's a, a rendering of the, of the plate that you see in front of you. Thank you, Chairman and committee for hearing this bill. And basically the bill is, does exactly what it says it does. It's just for all cancer. We have, from my understanding, four different cancer license plates and they're specific to cancer. And this is near and dear to my heart because I think most of you remember in 2018, I let you know that I had colon cancer so I am a colon cancer survivor. So I couldn't participate in purchasing a license plate because it's not one that takes care of all cancers. So this is what this does and it will bring in more revenue. And I have the, um, the supporters here from CORE also, and they will speak to how the monies are broken out and where it would go. Is there anything else? Any other questions from me? I do not see any questions. If Ms. Durham would like to speak about the way, where the, how the money is, is divided. Thank you. And I ask for your favorable support. Thank you so much, Representative Baysmore. Um, the funds will go much like with the breast cancer tag. We really will toward those. Um, to, may put those funds towards screening, towards education and towards treatment. And so um, as we do with the breast cancer funds, we take those and um, get proposals from organizations around the state, from our regional cancer coalitions, from uh, Grady Hospital, from other places, get those proposals. And then we give those in the form of grants each year to uh, different uh, organizations around the state. Thank you. We do have one, well, we have two questions now. Uh, Chairman Powell proper time, I'd like to be recognized for a motion. All right, uh, Representative McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess my only question that I have is, is that uh, I, breast cancer goes to breast cancer research. And now I'm just trying to figure out, since you have a one for colon cancer, mm -hmm. uh, lung cancer, throat mm -hmm. cancer, I mean, how would, so how would right. those funds break out and I mean, we don't have specifics as far as the, the amount that would go to each, but what we would do is again, request proposals um, from all over the, the state and ask for them to be uh, in the areas, particularly in our areas of um, five cancers that kill the most Georgians, to be honest, which is lung, colorectal, prostate, uh, breast and, and cervical um, and uh, blood cancers. And so we will ask specifically for proposals in those areas. We don't have everything written out yet, to be honest with you, but um, we can work with anyone on that as well. But we will request specific proposals for specific types of cancer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
And, and on both of these new tags that we looked at, the, uh, the all cancer and the support our troops, they did meet all the requirements. Uh, they, they both wrote the $25,000 check to, to, for the thousand pre-sold tags to, to qualify. They are 501c3, a rendering of the tags. They met all the qualifications uh, for, for the tags. So that's, they have done that and I have all that information in, in my file. So now would be the proper time for that motion, Chairman Powell. I move that we uh, forward House Bill 179 uh, out of this committee with a due pass recommendation by substitute. Uh, we have a due pass and multiple seconds. Any discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very Thank much. You. And uh, is uh, Representative DeLoach here this morning? I have not seen, he might've got hung up in traffic if he waited till this morning to come up. So we had a, a, a bill on House Bill 338. Uh, so he's not here and we, we're holding the other two. So un, unless anybody else had anything for the good of the committee? If not, this, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>